Good morning. This is Pastor Tim Wells, pastor of Cross of Christ Lutheran Church in Aurora, Nebraska. This morning with our preschoolers for chapel, we're going to be talking about Joseph. One of the verses, one of the lines that sticks out to me when I think of Joseph's story is this. Joseph is talking to his brothers and he says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Going back, if you remember the story, Jacob favors Joseph out of all of his sons. Gives him a fancy coat. Loves Joseph more than his brothers. And the other brothers, they're jealous. And so one day as they see Joseph coming out to the fields, they decide, you know what, let's just kill that kid. But then one of the other brothers, Reuben, says, no, let's not kill him. Let's just throw him in a pit. And his plan is to come back later and rescue Joseph from the pit and become the hero. And dad will love him again. But while Reuben is out and about, the other brothers see some slave traders coming. They get Joseph out of the pit and they sell Joseph to the slave traders. And Joseph ends up being a slave in Egypt. He is sold to a man named Potiphar, who's a leader of the Egyptian army, so a higher up. And Potiphar's wife takes a liking to Joseph. When Joseph refuses to have relations with Potiphar's wife, she accuses him of trying to hurt her, of rape, basically. So now Joseph is thrown in prison. And there in prison, Joseph meets two of Pharaoh's servants. You have a baker and a cupbearer, and they have dreams, and Joseph interprets those dreams. Uh, the bread maker, he's going to end up being executed, but the cupbearer is going to be restored to his position. He's going to go back to Pharaoh. And the cupbearer says to Joseph, thank you for all you've done for me for interpreting this dream. I'll tell Pharaoh about you. But then he forgets for like two years. And then one night, Pharaoh is having dreams and he can't understand them. And suddenly the cupbearer remembers, hey, there's this guy named Joseph who's in prison and he can interpret dreams. So Pharaoh has Joseph come and Joseph hears the dreams and says, there's going to be seven years of plenty and then seven years of drought, of famine. And what you need to do is store up food, extra food during the years of plenty so that you have enough to eat during the years of famine. And Pharaoh says, Joseph, why don't you do that work? And makes Joseph pretty much in charge of all of Egypt. And now it's the famine. And back home, Joseph's family, they're without food because there's a famine. So Jacob sends the sons down to Egypt to get food. And it's a long story, a back and forth. Uh, but in the end, the brothers are standing before Joseph, and Joseph finally tells them, Hey, it's me, your brother, who you sold into slavery. And suddenly they are frightened. They're terrified. And Joseph said, Don't worry, I forgive you. You meant this for evil, but God meant it for good. Joseph goes through all kinds of difficulties, all kinds of troubles, all kinds of suffering during that entire uh, story. And yet God is with them through it all and uses those terrible things that happen to Joseph for not only Joseph's good, he benefits and is made ruler of Egypt, but the good of all people is God uses Joseph in his position to save people from a famine. I think this is an important lesson for us to remember that even in the most difficult and evil of circumstances, God can and does use those things for our good. We ultimately see this in the cross, right? It's one of the most evil things that can happen to a person. Jesus is arrested, falsely accused, and then sentenced to death for crimes he didn't commit. And yet, as Jesus suffers and dies, God uses it for good, to forgive our sins, to cleanse us, to adopt us, 
to make us his forever. Remember those words today. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And even as you see sin and evil, which are rampant in our sinful world, and you see things happening that you know aren't right, remember those words and look for ways. How can God use this for good? Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you are indeed our God and that you have taken even the most evil of things and have been able to use them for our good. Lord, we pray that you would teach us to trust you, even in the most difficult of circumstances, to trust that you are there in our lives working for our good. In your name we pray, amen. Pray God's blessings on your day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Amen.